What if megalodon sharks never became extinct? 2,600,000 years ago, megalodons terrorized the seas and oceans, and they were believed to be the largest sharks to ever live on Earth. They were also the largest predators in vertebrate history. It's no wonder they were dubbed the prehistoric world's worst nightmare. What if this enormous marine carnivore had never become extinct? It isn't a fun scenario to imagine, but hey, we've also been toying with the idea ever since we saw fossils of dinosaurs and other beastly creatures that once roamed our planet. These gigantic animals ruled Earth millions of years ago, and we can't help but wonder what our life would have been like if we'd coexisted with them. Before we reveal the answer to this intriguing question, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can be the first to watch the latest videos from Brightside. Now, let's get to know the Megalodon Shark. This gigantic aquatic animal lived during the Neogene period, approximately from the early Miocene epoch to the Pliocene epoch. Its scientific name is Carcaraclis Megalodon, which means big tooth. Hmm, that's an apt moniker. But how large was the big tooth? Paleontologists believe that a megalodon's size was between 52 feet and 59 feet, and its weight could vary from 70 to 100 tons. Its length was equivalent to three full-grown great white sharks, almost two city buses, a human tower of six or seven people. Whoa! You could actually fit two megalodons in an Olympic-sized swimming pool, which has a length of 164 feet. Don't try this at home. Well, they are extinct, so… <sighs> as for the weight, it was as heavy as 14 adult elephants, a Boeing aircraft. By the way, its pectoral fins were similar to an airplane's wings. 33 adult great white sharks. Now that we've established a terrifying picture of a megalodon, and the fact that it's nothing compared to today's great white sharks, how did this monstrous marine species maintain its diet? Thanks to its huge teeth, it could devour medium to large aquatic animals. Before we tell you the typical menu of a megalodon, let's discuss the most interesting part of the shark, the tooth from which it got its name. During the Renaissance period, the megalodon's teeth were mistaken for the fossilized tips of the tongues of dragons and snakes. If you want an out-of-this-world theory, they were also thought to be moon rocks fallen from space. This was later debunked by Danish naturalist Nicholas Steno in 1667 in his book The Head of a Shark Dissected. This astonishing discovery paved the way for another mystery. What kind of species has a 5-7 to seven foot long tooth? The only remains of a megalodon to be discovered were its vertebrae and tooth. Oops, not just a single tooth. Hundreds of tooth fossils have been found all over the world. And nope, it isn't a complete vertebrae, but only parts of the spinal column. Going back to its famed teeth, which are popular among fossil collectors, they were found around the continents of Australia, Southeast Asia, Europe, and North and South America. You don't have to dive deep into the ocean to see an actual tooth. Shark Tooth Hill near Bakersfield, California is abundant in them. Yup, it's a hill with grass and land. But during the Miocene epoch, it was submerged in water and marine biodiversity thrived in it. You can also visit the Oxford University Museum of Natural History, San Diego Natural History Museum, or Leeds City Museum where such teeth are on display. That's much easier than digging through dirt, yet way less thrilling. How did the experts calculate the megalodon size based on its teeth alone? Ichthyologist John E. Randall used the ratios of the largest upper teeth, the jaw height, and the tooth enamel height of a white shark as a model. Later on, a replica of the shark's jaws was made, but not by Randall. The ancient shark's jaw width was about 6 feet to 7 feet, with a total of 276 teeth in five rows, looking a bit like a conveyor belt. Its bite force was 24,400 to 41,000 pounds. This is 6 to 10 times stronger than a white shark and 2 to 3 times that of a T-Rex. It is believed that the bite force of a megalodon was the strongest among living and extinct species. An enormous marine creature with a powerful bite can have almost anything on its dinner plate, but its favorite meal was whales, particularly baleen whales. 
If it wasn't in the mood for a whale as a main course, it feasted on sea cows, dolphins, porpoises, seals, sea lions, and other large sea animals. Its attacks on its prey were savage, but what do you expect from the scariest vertebrate of all time? The megalodon immediately clamped its teeth onto the body of its prey, which resulted in pulverized ribs and a ruptured heart and lungs. The second attack method of the megalodon was to rip its prey's fins to immobilize it before chow time. Megalodons came from the prehistoric shark named Otidus, which was unrelated to great white sharks. Ancient white sharks, however, existed at the same time as megalodons. But they were never lunch buddies, because white sharks prefer cool areas. Megalodons only swam in warm, shallow seas. The fussiness of the big tooth could be a possible reason for its downfall as Earth was about to enter the Ice Age. But what are the main reasons for the extinction of this great predator? There are three theories that have divided experts through the years. The first is global climate change. As the Ice Age started, the ocean's temperatures cooled down, and more water was locked up in the northern hemisphere to create glaciers. Remember that megalodons hated cool temperature waters. Another theory is that it starved to death. At the moment when the Ice Age began, the krill and plankton were driven up near the poles. These were the main food source for whales, so they had no choice but to move to cooler waters. The migration of the whales caused the decline of the food source of the megalodon, which had no ability to regulate its body temperature, unlike its prey, the whale. The last speculation is other sea predators. Megalodon pups were the primary target of orcas and white sharks, which led to the population of the largest predator of all time diminishing in numbers. The lowering sea levels diminished the pupping ground of megalodons as well. However, the three theories were busted in 2016 by researchers at the University of Zurich's Paleontological Institute and Museum. The real reason the megalodons became extinct was due to competition over food. What? Who would dare to compete with the largest and meanest predator ever recorded? Well, it's the same predators that were suspected of feeding on their young, great whites and orcas. Both of these small predators were more agile than the colossal megalodons, and they could survive on much less food. The big tooth needed to eat approximately 2,500 pounds of meat a day. Note that the average American eats only 500 pounds a year. In addition, they could live in cool waters that megalodons stayed away from. But what if, by a stroke of luck, megalodons didn't become extinct? First, we have to recreate the marine ecosystem where the big tooth thrived. This would mean that its food sources, like baleen whales, didn't go extinct either and would have stayed put and not migrated to non-tropical seas in search of food. The aquatic biodiversity would have been rich if that had happened. However, the super predators that existed along with the megalodons would also still be alive. Not a win-win situation for humanity, right? Sea voyages would be exciting, yet terrifying experiences. However, this gigantic sea creature can only move in the open waters, so the chance of meeting one up close in coastal areas is slim. Early humans might have had problems dealing with them because their modes of travel were only small water vessels. But we modern humans have a clever and advanced way of outwitting them using modern technology. Still, it's better to be safe than have a chance encounter with a megalodon where you might be its tasty meal. Throughout history, it isn't only megalodons that have caused terror on Earth. They're undoubtedly the largest, but here are the runners-up. The Ajiro Casus ben Mole existed 480 million years ago. It seems to be a crossbreed of a whale and a lobster, but it belongs to the arthropod family. Therefore, it could have been a distant cousin of a lobster. It was 6 feet 6 inches long and gobbled up planktons. The Sarcosuchus imperator could grow up to 39 feet and weigh 8 tons. It was also known as Super Croc, but wasn't an ancestor of modern crocodiles. It was more closely related to alligators. The Megatherium americanum was a giant ground sloth that was about 20 feet long. This oversized sloth had long arms and killer claws. Megatherium lived around 5 million to 11,000 years ago, and it wasn't a herbivore in nature, unlike its descendant today, as it was believed to eat meat. 
The Titanus wallery, or terror bird, was a flightless bird 10 feet tall with a long neck and robust pair of legs. It could run at 50 kilometers per hour. The terror bird lived around 60 to 2 million years ago. At 48 feet long, the Titanoboa serigenesis was a distant relative of the anaconda and boa constrictor. We will not raise any hypothetical questions today. Instead, we are glad that these dangerous and massive animals became extinct before our time. We would surely see a case of survival of the fittest, or a return to hunter mode if they still roamed the Earth. If this huge shark didn't become extinct, what would you do if you met one while you were on your way to the Bahamas? Share your fun speculations in the comments. And always stay tuned for more jaw-dropping videos by joining us on the Bright Side of Life.